right, this is Nick Lowry and my buddy Damon Cornelia, and we're here to uh, do a little judo with you today. And I just wanted to start with talking about uh, the moment of engagement. There are two basic ways when we hook up with our partner right here at this moment. Yeah, just watch the mic there. As our bodies are coming into contact, that we can we can start affecting the man. And and one is commonly well known, and everybody does it. And you say you get a hold of him and you do something to him. Pretty basic. But there's a way that's more subtle that people aren't very well versed in, but has a really interesting effect on the guy. So first we'll just look at the normal thing. I reach up and we make our grip and I try to do something to him. Wow, and right at the moment of contact there's a little vulnerability and I go, wow, I can just do something to him. Wow, cool. I throw him with my hands perhaps. And if you're really good with the skill and the timing, you can just reach in and as he's reaching in and you just interrupt his, interrupt his uh, activity of trying to set up on you and throw him with your hands. And that can become a whole skill set unto itself. But that's fairly well known, and if you do it too slow, so it takes place over a long period of time, he'll feel it, he'll stabilize. He'll feel this, uh, this tension in your body, and he can re read it and respond to it. And you're pushing on him, or you're pulling on him, and it's very consciously uh, adaptable for him. His nervous system can feel that, respond to it, shut it down very readily. So if you're going to activate him with your hands right off the point of contact, you want to do it not so much as, a, as one long driving action, but as, a, as a, uh, a movement out of a phase of relaxation into effect and back off, pretty much. And this is very akin to dribbling a basketball. Because if you watch a basketball guy, he's not, he's not pushing hard and then pushing hard. His arms basically relaxed and he's just catching it and flexing and flexing and flexing. It's a pulsing action. And when you're doing this sort of activity where you're going to put the power on the guy and you're just going to affect him, I don't just drive in here and push to his rear corner, for instance, in a long driving push. I actually walk in, place my hands, let the arms relax, let my center collapse in and then <laughs> dribble the basketball. It's a moment of engagement coming off the hands that is very different. If I walk in and just blast into him, it'll be very different. I go, boom, like that. He can hop and hop. And if I come in and everything's relaxed and then... Now, as he goes in the air, I give him a point of reference for stability because I like him to have a nice fall. You could let go and just sort of let him sort it out himself, but that's kind of not taking care of your partner too well. But this activity, you can do it just pushing their chest, put your hand up. Here's a way to test it. If I walk in and just hit the guy, bang, he can structurally get behind that. He can organize himself around that. He can, he can rebuff me, boom. Say, damn, he's strong, look at that. Boom. If I walk in, place my hand in place, let my arm relax, just sort of fall in behind it so my center of gravity comes in a little deeper and then pop him just like, Dribbling a ball. Do it back to me. Just walk in, let your whole center collapse under it, then yeah, right. You just pop it with that momentary thing. It's very hard for their center of gravity and their posture to organize around that pulsing activity. So that's, that's one manner of delivering the energy at the moment of contact with the man that can be very useful to you. The second is more subtle. The second takes place when we actually engage our muscles before the contact ever takes place and then we affect him with the relaxation of that. And that looks and feels completely different. If we're both reaching out and I reach out and I engage the muscles in the middle of my back to open my shoulder blades, like my shoulder blades are both uh, opening this way. And I reach out, and on the moment of contact, I relax it. He can tell you, it's a very strange sensation. It's like you can't really read what the hell happened to him. It's sort of like getting sucked into a vortex. It's a very strange sensation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I just reach out, relax, right at the moment of contact. And at the moment of contact, my shoulder blades, which had been pulled out under torsion and tension, relax and just come back so they're both falling toward the spine. If I have his shoulder blades to show you, 
if my hands are here and he reaches out, like you're reaching for a baby, yeah, that's falling off, and now just relax that, my hands collide together. They start coming back to the spine. Reach out, boom, and just let, relax it. Now relax it instantly. Don't, don't pause and pull it back, just relax. Yeah, there you go. That activity happening right in the center of his spine, right in that shoulder process, is not affecting him by, by pulling. In fact, if I reach out and put my hands on him and pull with my back muscles, again, he feels it through the arms, he feels it through the shoulders, he feels it through his whole torso. But if I reach out and then what's actually affecting him here is the lack of something. <laughs> It's like negative space in a, in a picture, or it's like uh, silence in between the notes. He's actually getting a signal that he can't read because there is no signal there. It's a lack of signal. Torsion, he's adjusted to this, his body just wasn't adjusted to this. And that little change is sufficient because it's coming from the core muscle groups in the body to start affecting him in a fairly profound way. And if I do it badly, I would reach out and press down. I want to collapse him. He's not going down. I reach out, relax in. And his whole body starts to have this strange crumply effect. <laughs> very useful, very useful. But it's affecting him not with the positive exertion of energy, but with the relaxation of energy. You can do the same in your hips that at the, at the moment that we come into contact, if my hip is coiled, like I've got my, my uh, left side of my pelvis just sort of coiled and locked and I make contact with him, and, he f and this is the structure he's dealing with, and at that point of contact I change my, and just take the pressure off of that, it's very strange. It's hard for him to do much to. Isn't that strange? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because everything gets driving in this line around this relaxing part of my anatomy, but he gets no signal saying, come over here. I'm not, I'm not driving him with any, the upper body, he, which would be fingertips. Just touch your fingertips. There we go. And we have this connection between our fingertips, right? I have the moment of contact. I'm going to make a little flex right here, right here in the back of this hip. And on the moment of contact, relax it. And everything starts falling this way. Weird deal, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So, this is a method of delivering energy, or rather, uh, inviting him into off balance, into Kazushi, that is not as well known in the world. A lot of folks know about the setting up lines of weakness and touching him in inopportune moments in time and pulsing the body at the right time. A lot of folks doing this. Not so many that you lay hands on and they are actually beating you with what's going on in the middle of their torso. Because the hands and the arms are still very relaxed here. And you say, well, you're not throwing him. Yeah, you don't care. His body's got to come out of this some way, shape, or form. And as it does, whoo. Now we put a little ending on it. So this has a quality of being a very subtle way of, of uh, inviting them into it. Here, try it on me. Just as you reach out. Just reach out like you're reaching for the baby and, yeah, but all at once. Don't gradually let it off. Let it off all at once. Yeah, right. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That is weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard not to, when you get it right, when it's really active and let off, like that, it's, it's very difficult to, there you go, good, good, reach more, yeah, <laughs> isn't that great? Uh -huh. So, and you'll find this all kinds of places, it could be reaching out to shake hands with you, say, ah, oh, how you doing, mm. and you kill him with one hand. So what does this mean for your judo, it means you have two these both go back to Tewaza, with activation of throwing from the hands. And you have active forms of Tewaza, you have forms like, if we're saying, uh, oh, Ukiyotoshi, for instance. Classically, Ukiyotoshi, we would be stretching him out actively on this point, 
and throwing them in this hole. But we could just uh, have this moment of contact with a little coil in the hip and a relaxation of that coil. <laughs> so what actually hit him was nothing in my arms, but a, an activity right here at this groin muscle pulling in and a relaxation of it that drew him off into this hole. Now we can do a very similar thing if I just open the hip, <laughs> I opened it dramatically, that's the pulse, that's an active form, this time we'll do a passive form. I don't have to move near as much on the passive one because all it was was torsion relaxation, right? So you have different methods of achieving the same thing. You're saying, well, how is that Tawaza? Well, it's still Tawaza because the only points of contact are out here. You're not throwing around a fulcrum of any other part of your body, even though the activity that's doing it to him is coming from other parts of your body. So, good little methods to work with, play with a little bit, see how they work for you, and bring your concentration into how you're using different parts of your anatomy and what it does to relate to him. If you're in a relationship with him here, you've got some kind of setup where our bodies are together, if everything's correct, you can just hold this basically neutral and just change you and see what happens in him. Now he recovers from this and change you again and see what happens in him, change you again. And by change you, I just mean activate different parts of your shoulders and hips without trying to do a damn thing to him, without trying to force any sort of pushing or pulling activity. I'm not trying to twist him or pull him down or push him up. I'm just changing me. <laughs> and when I changed me, he came along for the ride. It's a very, very different sensation than if I'm actively trying to lift him. I walk into Damon and say, I want you to come up uh, and try to lift him up. Good luck, but if I just make this sense of connect, connection together so I feel his center, and then I just concentrate on making me taller, wow, look at him go up in the air for me. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> If I take the opportunity to treat us as one combined whole, as one center of gravity, then he doesn't have the opportunity to not respond as if it's one center of gravity. If I start acting on Damon like he's an inanimate thing, and I just want to push and pull it around and do stuff to it, that's one thing. But if I just want to have a relationship with him and then change me, then he has a hard time not responding to that. And so, Tewaza depends upon uh, understanding this way of, of unifying the bodies into one being and then operating on him indirectly by operating on yourself. And that's a, an element that rarely gets understood and brought forth. So anyhow, I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you.